Um, so I'm going to just go and show you first where we can find BLAST. Okay? So we're back at the NCBI, and if we scroll down, and that's what I'm, I'm indicating by this arrow here where the, where the sidebar is, if we scroll down to the bottom of that page, um, there's the link for the FTP site. Okay? This is where we're going to go in the next set, but I, what I also want to emphasize is that there are a number of tutorials available. So there's a section here on training and tutorials, and then there's a number of um, how-to sections here, and these, these are updated and, and revolve. Okay. So again, I'm just pointing out that there are a number of resources already available at NCBI that can be useful to you in your work. Now let's go to this FTP site here. Okay. So there, there are a number of tools that are available for download and installation on your own machine. If we go to the link for the basic local alignment search tool, um, and the URL is shown here at the bottom of the slide, we're going to come to this window. Right? And then if we click on BLAST, we're going to see a number of different versions of BLAST. Um, the example I'm giving is for the version that, that I'm happening, I happen to be running at this point, which is 2.2.20. Um, I don't have a recommendation for a specific version. I, I tend to avoid the latest versions um, until I'm sure that all the bugs have been worked out. Um, so the next step is that we need to select, so what I've done here is I've gone ahead and clicked on this version. Okay, And then within there, what you see is that there are a number of programs that are stored as compressed files. And so now is the point where we need to select the version for our operating system. So generally, if you're, if you're running Windows on a, on a laptop or a desktop, it's probably going to be the Win32 executable. Um, for my computer, it's the IA32 Linux um, version, and that would be appropriate for, for either a Linux machine or a Macintosh. Um, and again, the, the version depends a little bit on the machine that you're intending to use. Okay, and I want to talk just a little bit about that. So in, in the case of my notebook, um, it is running a 32-bit processor, although it's not obvious in doing that. I can, I can use the systems tools to tell me what the processor it, it itself is, uh, but then I actually had to go outside to investigate the processor a little bit to confirm that it was a 32-bit processor. All right. um, so knowledge of your, your tools becomes an important step here. Okay. The next step then is to go ahead and download the appropriate version of BLAST. And um, in this case, we're saving it um, to a folder which we've called BLAST. And my recommendation is that this be um, this folder be as close to your root as you can get it. Right now, some machines, and Macintoshes do this. They sort of pr protect the root drive, so you can't get that close. Um, the importance of getting close to the root is that you simplify path statements, and it makes it easier to get the parts of your pipeline to talk to each other. All right, so that's that's the key point that I want to leave you with. Okay, now. Once you've got the file on your computer, it's in a compressed form, and so you have to uncompress it, right? So from a DOS shell, you can just type in the command, um, essentially the executable command, or from uh, the Unix terminal, you type in the tar command, as shown here. And what happens is that the program then is unpacked and installed onto your computer. And so what you should see in the directory that you created that you now have three folders that have been put together. And so the bin file is the one that contains most of the BLAST files and the executable programs. Um, the document file contains documentation in HTML format, and then the data file isn't sequence data, it's algorithms that are used in the BLAST program. Okay. Um, 
So one, one of the things that I'll say is that in, in the Unix program, it ends up creating a new program or a new folder called blast-2.2.20 and installs everything there. And, and my recommendation would be that you rename that to simplify path statements. You may even want to just create, call that your blast folder and, and work straight out of there. Okay. And so, yeah, that, um, that's just a brief introduction on where you can go to get BLAST. And um, before I go on to the next part, which is just a brief discussion of BioPerl, I want to just cover that there are a couple of missing slides there due to incompatibility from my system in this. What, what I wanted to mention is that there are a number of different BLAST programs. And so most of what we're going to talk about here is BLASTN which is a version of BLAST that allows you to compare a nucleotide sequence to a nucleotide sequence. But there are flavors of BLAST. So there's a BLAST-P, which is appropriate for comparing protein sequences to protein sequences. Um, there are different versions of translated BLAST. So you can take a, a protein query and query that against a translated nucleotide database, right? And so I would, I would suggest that if, you, if you're not familiar with these different flavors of BLAST, that you spend a little bit of time in NCBI resources reading about those.